Eh bien on y est, Starcraft 2 Legacy of the Void vient d'être annoncé, la dernière extension de Starcraft 2. Et il faut savoir qu'il s'agira d'un standalone. plus besoin de posséder Wings of Liberty ou Heart of the Swarm pour jouer à ce, ce dernier opus. Alors dans la campagne solo, vous incarnerez Artanis à bord d'un puissant vaisseau Protoss et vous vous battrez pour reconquérir votre terre natale et réunir les différentes tribus Protoss. A votre disposition, vous aurez de puissantes armes, notamment des bombardements stratégiques et des arrêts du temps. Vous pourrez aussi customiser votre progression grâce à un arbre de talent. Enfin, Starcraft 2 Legacy of the Void, c'est surtout le multi avec de nouvelles unités. Le lurker est de retour, mais il y en a d'autres. Et pour approfondir cela, nous sommes allés poser quelques questions à David Kim. Yeah, we actually tested the lurker in Heart of the Swarm. Yeah. And back then, what we realized was, because there are units like the Immortal, Colossus, uh, Marauder, Siege, Siege, Siege tanks that are even greater range than Brood War, yeah. all these like, really awesome counters to the Lurker were kind of making it so that there's not a lot of room for the Lurker. But since then, we've been exploring different ways to see if we can make the Lurker work. And that's why the Lurkers can be upgraded to have Siege range in Legacy of the Void. And with this upgrade, we feel like the Lurker is a powerful option. We initially created this, this unit so that when players, turn players go bio strategy okay. against the Zerg, oftentimes Zerg only stays with tier 2 units, so we wanted to give more opportunities for Zerg to play more diverse. And also on this side, we wanted to give Terran more options to transition out of bio into things like Banshees or Battlecruisers. The main goal of the Herc is because it's got really high health and light armored flag, it's supposed to tank a lot of damage. So you jump in, you tank a lot of damage from a lot of uh, plus armor damage units such as like Immortals, like Stalkers, okay. so on, while your bio army deals the damage. One of the issues of the Colossus, which is the main splash option on the robotics, yeah. we feel is because the strength is so high and it's so all round of a unit, Protoss players want to kind of gather your whole, their whole army to protect the Colossus yeah. and they can win. And we see this in WCS games a lot too. And we wanted to kind of lessen the effect of that. So while we still want the Colossus to be good in certain scenarios, for example, the Colossus is still better than the Disruptor against say like Zerglings or yeah. Zealots, but we didn't want it to be so all around. And instead, this new option, which is a lot more skill-based because you have to kind of predict Absolutely. how long it's going to be versus the distance that I have to travel. So we wanted a a new splash option on the robotics that would kind of replace the Colossus in majority of the situations, but not all the situations. Um, and something that requires a lot more skill and a lot more micro. Le principe de la BlizzCon, c'est d'amener 16 joueurs qui ont bataillé pendant une année entière. Et tu prends les 16, tu prends la crème de la crème, et ensuite, tu leur, en plus, tu leur donnes du temps pour préparer des trucs vraiment intéressants, parce que les, les, les joueurs connaissent leurs adversaires quelques semaines en avance, donc ils peuvent préparer leur premier adversaire. Certainly the biggest BlizzCon I've ever been to is probably the biggest BlizzCon I think Blizzard have ever done. One more time for the 2014 Starcraft 2 World Champion, Starcraft! 